California's Communities is supported by the California Redevelopment Association Foundation, a statewide organization made up of cities, counties, nonprofits, and private businesses sharing a common goal of bringing renewed life to neighborhoods and downtowns by expanding local businesses, creating jobs, building affordable housing, restoring buildings, and improving public facilities and infrastructure. Redevelopment, building better communities throughout California. Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and here it is, another beautiful day in paradise. We are in beautiful Santa Barbara. Actually, we're just about two and a half blocks right off of State Street, which is the main street that runs right through the middle of Santa Barbara. We're surrounded with these beautiful mountains. We are in paradise, and we're going to be spending the whole day here. These two gentlemen are here to kind of kick things off and set the stage for us. Introduce yourself to everybody. Hi, I'm Rob Pearson. I am the executive director of the Santa Barbara Housing Authority. Yes, sir. And I'm Simon Kiefer. I'm with the Redevelopment Agency of the City of Santa Barbara. Okay, we got our introductions out of the way. Let's talk about where we are right now. When you drive down Carrillo Street and you look over here, this looks like a resort hotel, but it's not. Where are we standing right now? Well, you'll, you're right in front of El Carrillo. It is permanent supportive housing for the homeless, one of Santa Barbara's first projects to try to end homelessness in our community. Okay, let's stop right there because let's be honest with each other. When people think of Santa Barbara, homeless is not the first thing they think of, but yet over the years, they've always been homeless here in Santa Barbara. Like most California coastal communities, um, I think you'll always see people drawn to the community, whether you're wealthy or whether you're poor. And if you think about being homeless, uh, you might pick a better environment than parts of the Central Valley. And being homeless is not against the law. So how do you deal with the issue? It's building El Carrillo's, which we hope to talk about today. Well, yeah, and it's a big issue. On any given day, how many homeless do you estimate are in Santa Barbara? Well, in the city itself, about 2,000 people are considered homeless on any given day. Wow, that's a lot of people. That yeah, is. And a lot of, that's a real challenge as to where to house these homeless people. And that's how this whole thing started, isn't it? That's true. And what we did was we came up with a 10-year plan to end chronic homeless. What we're trying to do is focus on that 10% of the homeless population that consumes more than half of the homeless services. And so what we're looking to do is something other than doing shelters and emergency services and jails and detox centers. Overnight, quick fixes, that sort of thing. That only deal with the symptoms mm -hmm. and not the underlying causes. So how did you come up with the idea of a facility like this? Well, we did this in conjunction with the Housing Authority. Uh, the site came up for sale. Uh, the Housing Authority came to us with an interest in developing a project here. And we said, okay, we'll give you the money for it but we want you to build homeless housing here. This was the redevelopment agency. This is here. the redevelopment agency coming forward with close to $2 million for acquisition of the land. All right, now when you got this land, there was nothing here. None of this was here, right? No, we liked the site because it was basically surface parking. It had a small building, but it had previously been a space to store old taxis, and it was a U-Haul operation. It was a parking lot. It was a parking lot, yes. We're setting this up perfectly, and before we go inside and talk with the people who actually live here, let's face another problem head on, and that is I don't know very many communities anywhere that openly embrace having a facility, homes for the homeless, in their neighborhoods. Everybody believes in helping the homeless. Nobody wants the homeless in their neighborhood. Well, that's where they make uh, a big mistake because the homeless are in their neighborhood. Do you want them under a roof with shelter and services or do you want them living on the street? So yeah. the answer to me is fairly simple. They're going to be here unless you do something about housing them properly. So we either create the housing like this and give them a safe place to live and get healthy or they will continue to be on the streets or in our jails or in our hospitals and it that is not us very more money in the process more money, and not money. address the underlying cause so the community here embraced this project from the very beginning planning commission and city council there were it was a unanimous well, what vote about the on people who bodies. live in this neighborhood I, I would i'm pleased to say that we have some enlightened residents in santa barbara we're also building in what we call investor-owned neighborhoods downtown where 
as long as the product's going to be built nicely and well managed and we have a proven track record, I think the neighborhood will realize the benefits. And that's yeah. what we got lucky here again. Well, this is exciting because I've already been inside this morning. We got here a little bit early and I've been nosing around and I've met already some of the people who live here. And that's what we're going to be doing the rest of the day. You all have set this up perfectly, but we're going to be going inside and meeting the people who actually live here. And they have some amazing, inspirational stories to share with every one of us. We should all be proud of what's happening here in Santa Barbara because this place, it's called El Carrillo, is a wonderful example of the very best of California's communities. Oh boy, what a beautiful, well we're in the courtyard right now. We've come just in off Carrillo Street. Right. We've hooked up with your name? Fanula. I'm Fanula Kraus. And you represent? I represent Pathpoint. We offer supportive services for the clients who live here, for the residents who live here. Now who lives here? Well, everybody who lives here is was formerly homeless. Many have a, a, um, a disability, either a mental health or a physical disability. Um, sometimes it's vets, vets from um, some sort of disadvantage that resulted in them being coming homeless. Are they physically disabled? Are they Some drug, are. Uh, they have drug and alcohol Substance problems? abuse problems often, that's often. So it covers the spectrum just like the reasons for being homeless all of the cover reasons. the spectrum. Exactly, all of the reasons for being homeless. People end up here and we support them in living, becoming valued members of the community. That's our role, so path basically point. they check in here, everybody gets a room. They get an apartment with a kitchen, small kitchen, a bathroom, they get their own door. That's a big thing for a lot of the clients, they have their own home. We're gonna see a lot you of are. these uh, living spaces. You are. And it's so beautiful it's here. It's gorgeous, it's really gorgeous. So almost immediately, they're in a whole nother living situation. Yeah. They're in a a, a beautiful home. place, a home, a sheltered place. Yeah, and that's a shift for a lot of people because a lot of people have been homeless for years, some people 12, 20 years, and they have to sort of make that shift that they belong now. Yeah. And there's people here to help them as opposed to kicking them and telling them move on. Yeah. So it's, it's a shift for a lot of people. Where we come from and what choices we've made results in where we are now and this is a new start for most people here it's it's a wonderful wonderful thing i wish every community could have an el carrillo okay we are visiting our first apartment apartment 222 i'm knocking on the door i know she's in there there she is <laughs> can we come in of course well this is the first apartment we've seen we've heard a little bit about these things there's your bed, there's your chair, there's your chest of drawers, there's your TV, there's your sink, I can sink. bathroom. So Back you there. got a nice little apartment uh, yes here. Yes, I do. It's great. Your name is? Tiana. Okay. Now, were you homeless, homeless, homeless? You were on the street. Yes, I was for three years. And how did you get here? I put an at, well, I'm not quite sure. It was a <laughs> blessing. But it was through um, New Beginnings, mm -hmm. the counseling center, because I had a car and I had a safe place to park. You were living in the car? In the car, right. Now, and were you living in your car because of, uh, I, I don't want to be personal. I under, I'll tell you, first of all, after 20 years, I lost my job. Then, um, then uh, my car broke down and I had a home, a mortgage and all. And then I was hit by a pickup truck mm -hmm. as a pedestrian. So all those things, and then after three months, then my I lost my home and a lot of things. Did they you compiled. ever think this was going to happen? Never. That, that that would happen to me? Never. Yeah. No, no. I had it all planned out. Everything was great. But it can happen quickly. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. But So now you're here. Now and I'm let's here. let's talk a little bit about what your life is like. Let's stand over here in the other okay. part of your living room. I all guess right, this, this is way. a combination living room, bedroom, <laughs> got the whole it's thing not, here. It's everything here. Yeah. Well, it's right. not the size of the apartment, <laughs> no. is it? No, it's just wonderful to be home. And plus, I have this little 
line up here? Home is where your home story begins. Home is where begins. your story begins. Yes, but I think homelessness is where your story really begins. Yeah, you know. but you're but adding great. another chapter to your story now, right. hopefully yeah. a better one. Oh, it's great. And how important is this place to the next chapter in your story? This place right this here. This place right here, I would not have been able to have survived if I didn't have this place. I'm one of the low-income people, and uh, I could not have survived living in my car like that. There's just no way. No, yeah. I'm doing really great now that I have this place, and I've been here since day one. Does it so seem really like a whole nother world to you now? Does it seem like a nightmare, what happened to it you before? Was, I still have a little post-traumatic stress. It's like every time I do my dishes, like, yeah, I have a sink. Don't complain about doing the dishes because I can do them in the sink rather than having to go to the park and dig them out of my car. And it's, it's just wonderful now. So I'm really wow. happy, yeah. <laughs> Hottie, oh, hello, how you doing? <laughs> we always try to make these things look spontaneous, <laughs> like you didn't think I was coming. Y your name is? Steve St. Ryan. Shall all right, then you know what we're doing? We're visiting all the residents here, a lot of them. Yeah, I've seen you walking around. Tell us why you're here. What got you here? What got you homeless in the first place? I was a heroin addict by the time I was 15. Yeah. And uh, I didn't stop until I got hit by a train four years ago. That's how you lost your leg. Yeah. Now, how did you get here? Okay. Because you were obviously rock bottom. Rock, rock bottom. Okay. I spent 40 years of hell. You know, my mother didn't sleep for 40 until she fat, until I got clean. Worried about you? Yes. I grew up in an upper middle class family. I grew up on the beach in Santa Barbara, you know. And here I was living in bushes alongside the freeway because of my addiction. Yeah. And there, in the summertime, it was really hard to get a homeless bed, you know. And all of that has changed now. But at that time, it was bad. Well, now, how's it changed now? Because this place has a zero tolerance. That's it? right. It sure drugs. does, thank God. This place definitely has played a major part in my life turning around. Um, without El Carrillo and the staff here, I don't know if I could have made it. It was really rough, you That's all I can do is tell my story. And maybe somebody will catch a little bit of it, but I'll tell you what. I went from the homeless shelter and moved my way up and got a bed at the Salvation Army. And they, that was like a step up. And then this place was opening. And just by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I got in at the last minute. And by the grace of God, here I am. Yeah. And I was one of the first ones here, and I'm one of the last ones here. <laughs> and it's been a wonderful, wonderful trip here. Um, like I said, I don't, my family's everywhere around California now, so I'm, I feel kind of alone at times. Well, this is your family. Exactly. Exactly. I, I have a lot of really good friends here. I have people that I care about and care about me, and we're a pretty close-knit group. All these years, I've always thought, I'm not homeless. I'm not homeless. But I was living with some girl or in some situation where I actually thought I ha I wasn't homeless, but it was so always somebody else's house. Yeah, you know, this is your house. This is my house, and I, I'm so proud of it. <laughs> I really am, and uh, I'm really grateful for you coming here today and taking a look at Santa Barbara and El Carrillo and seeing what we're doing here. If you want to get a quick shot of my, there's a nine-year-old uh, picture of my mom when she was nine years old. Steve's bringing me outside his apartment. To, what are you going to show me out here, Steve? I'm going to show you this wonderful view I've got, million-dollar view. That is a million-dollar view. I'll tell you, people pay that much for, that, for a view <laughs> like that, too, here. All the way to Gaviota Coast. The mountains. The, all the way to Carpinteria. This is downtown Santa Barbara downtown right here. Riviera. Boy. I've got it all. You, too. <laughs> so, really, you've gone... From the bottom, I've got to this. To this. It's been a wild ride, but it's been a great ride. And you're home. I'm home.
I'm here. Walking down this beautiful walkway, down this courtyard. It's absolutely beautiful down here. Our home tour continues, apartment 210. And here to greet us, introduce yourself to everybody. I'm Todd, Todd Tipton. All right, can we come in? You sure can. You got everything. Yeah, go here, I'm following you. <laughs> Boy, you got everything cleaned up. You're yeah, kind yeah. of a neat person, aren't I, you? I am. Yeah, I like, <laughs> like to keep things clean. Show me your apartment. What have you got well, going on here? See, Give me the home tour. Well, let's just see. Uh, of course, we brought in extra furniture here. Yeah. Now, in, in places like this, you bring something in, you want to bring something out because we don't have a lot of space. Yeah. And so, and Look I at your dishes. You got your whole thing. Everything's clean. Right. And I just had breakfast, so. <laughs> you got everything, your well, robe hung up. Well, yeah. Look at the bathroom over here. It's, uh, the bathrooms are bigger. I was telling them it was originally for uh, wheelchairs. Uh -huh. So they had to be big enough for wheelchairs, if, if you'll notice. Yeah. And it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's some people come in with a wheelchair and we can a adapt to them. Yeah. And, and you got a little. This is my favorite, actually. It, it's my little, you know, uh, Christopher Robinson had his little oasis, as it were. And I have mine. Oh, wow. Yeah, we have. And I see birds here, right in the middle of the city, concrete highway, as it were. Uh, you know, avocado. Bogey beers and my cactus. <laughs> it's, wow. it's, a, it's an oasis in the middle of nowhere because that city, that's also owned by the city all the way around us. Wow. So. This is beautiful. Yeah, I, I love my little patio, but we, not too many people have them. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. So. <laughs> Do you consider yourself lucky all the way around? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been, uh, luck has really gotten on my side. I think luck is a good word for it. Well, uh, a lot it's of it's more hard than work, though. Yeah, you got to work at stuff like this. A lot yeah. of it is not just luck, because you've got to take this opportunity and do something and, with and, it. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll graduate from here. I, in fact, I'm planning on moving in about six months to, to a, a bigger to place. a one bedroom, and we're going to graduate. Just uh, uh, getting better takes time. To fall is really easy. See, you can fall within seconds, but you're going to have to take time to advance yourself, and that's what we're doing here. Little by little, um, you know, as, as time goes on, economics bad the way they are, we'll make it. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. He's moving up. Yep. We're on our way. There are a lot of chapters to the El Carrillo story. Now we've come back outside on Carrillo Street and hooked up with, your name is? Leanne Marino. Okay, now you used to live in there, didn't yes, you? Yes, I sure did. Because you had hit rock bottom, huh? I you? did, what I did. What was the problem? I just couldn't get it together to pay my first and last month's rent and uh, all the finances that it takes to live on your own. Had you I had needed some any help. other problems? Were there any substance? Mm, there not... was mostly a family just uh, moved away from my family and lost contact with them, an adopted family of mine, so I didn't have any family or anyone, but I've lived in Santa Barbara for 27 years and I wanted to stay here, but the cost was, it was too expensive to live here. Were you, did you classify yourself as homeless? Yes, I did. I did. I, I was having trouble staying stable and able to keep my life together and you ended up here I did and as what a miracle. was that like here how many oh, years were you here it was wonderful I was there for a year after one year I was able to move into a program which is right down the street yeah let's walk down here yeah. because we haven't heard about that program down the street <laughs> yet what's that all about well it's wonderful it's I got my own apartment with my own walk-in closet well wait a minute I thought <laughs> people had their own apartments down here I do but this is a bigger one this has my stove and refrigerator full size and everything is wonderful now how do you get from here down to here well i work downtown i'm able to work downtown and work in, i live in a building that's for downtown worker for people who are working working downtown and living downtown so if you stay down here for a while right and you're able to get a job and you kind of stabilize yourself. Yes. Then you can move to the next level. Yes. Now, is this all still part of El Carrillo? It's called Casa, Casa Fuentes, and it is a part part of the housing authority. Uh -huh. So it's related to the same um, 
company or but whatever. But it's different. It's yeah. different. <laughs> right. All right. Well, let's right. go. You got to show me around. Yes, I How will. How do we get in here? Well, let me take you through the front entrance here. Boy, this is beautiful. It sure is. And it must be a big deal. It's just a short distance, but it really means something. It sure does. This is my home. Wow, look at this. Oh, this is beautiful. I love it. Wow. Isn't this nice. All right, let's go in. Oh, look at your courtyard in here. Yes. Oh, can we just go to the courtyard for a minute? Yes, we may. Oh, look. This is my sanctuary. Oh. This is where I spend time, and I'm able to do my laundry right here. No more living in the car or having to camp out somewhere and uh, or, or sleep on people's sofas. You did all of those things. I did for 12 years. Can you believe that you that I that can't. was part of your life now I looking can't. back? I can't. Now I can start a new fresh life and I'm able to create my own life and, and live the way I want to live. Okay, Tiana, Leanne, and I have left El Carrillo because why, Leanne? Because we're here to see my work, where I work. You work here at the bookstore? No, this is my friend Karen, and I come by and see Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi, you. you nice to meet you. How long have you known you? this lady? Oh, a year and a half. Is she a pretty good lady? Wonderful. Does she give you a discount on the bakery goods? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> that's where we're heading right now. We want to see where you work, and you work at our daily bread. Right in right here. Here. Yes. So you're off I today. I am off today. Come on, let's crowd in here. Okay. Because this looks like a really nice kind of a community bakery. Yes, it is. It's our local bakery here. It's been here about 27 years, and we sell all kinds of breads and pastries. And now, you've worked here how long? About a year and a half. And you've lived at El Carrillo how long? I lived there for about a year, and then I moved over to the downtown workers building, right. which is... Right, so did they help you get the job? Well, they get, they helped me uh, motivate me and get my self-esteem back so I was able to go out there and look for a job. But you came in here and... Yes, and I... Interviewed for this job. Yes, and my boss right over there hired me. That's Hello, Beto. Hello, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so... This is where you you walk here from El Camino yes, every day. Yes, I do, day. and it's just wonderful. I love it. Had you ever been to her bakery before? I have before? never been here before, even though we're good friends. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you all are good friends oh, at El yes, Carrillo. Oh, yes, uh -huh. Now, where is it you work again? I work at Stearns Wharf at the uh, Devil in the Deep Blue Sea have and the ever, Shell Shop. I have. I buy all kinds of bracelets there. Ah, <laughs> so you all kind of support each yeah. other of in your course, job. Of course, of yeah. course, yes. So this is a real job in a real place yes it all is beginning to fit together oh it certainly is we're ending up here in the el carrillo community room there's a party kind of a party going on here boy have we had fun today we have met so many nice people yeah and we've learned so much yeah. and i'm in a way, I'm kind of overwhelmed at what we have learned. Yeah. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? You do, don't you? I think, yeah. Uh, I think you, you see people, you, you, we all have a sense that, by the grace of God, we could all be one step away from homelessness, especially in the climate at the moment. And um, there are a lot of factors. You know, there's um, disabilities, circumstances, and choices that put people in situations where they need a hand up. And a small hand up and a little bit of support can make a huge difference. Yeah, something as simple. And of course, this isn't simple. This is a big deal here. As a roof over your head, a place to call home. home. Well, that's the thing. It's the housing first model. Give someone a home. Then they have a base to, to address everything else. Their medical, their mental health, their education, their vocational. Their self-esteem. Their, their psychological, their sense. Yes, it's all about I belong. I, I belong and I deserve and I can make a difference. Why do you think the word homeless is so misunderstood and so stereotyped? I think people, um, there's a stigma, stigma involved in people, you know, they see panhandling and they're maybe a little afraid of people approaching them and they don't know about 
substance abuse or mental illness. But, you know, it's bottom line is it could be any one of us, you yeah. know, one, one little, um, you know, like I said, a circumstance, um, a mental illness, um, a, a wrong choice. Yeah. Any one of us could end up in that same place. It's all very fragile, isn't it? It is, it really is. And we gotta remember that we're all one community and the more we look out for our you know, our more um, what's the word, vulnerable, vulnerable. The more we as a as a community will be strong and healthy. Well, if that's the criteria, then Santa Barbara deserves a big gold star. Yeah. It because does. you're doing it the right way here and this should be an example for other communities all over California yeah, to I, follow. To follow. I mean I got to acknowledge alcohol, drug, mental health services by the Santa Barbara County who fund our agency and allow us to be here to help people. The Santa Barbara City Housing Authority, my agency Pathpoint, the city of Santa, it's a collaboration of all the agencies well, serving the, the people. people of Santa Barbara who make this a priority, make this important Yes. for Santa Barbara to do something like that's this. That's exactly, that's, it all starts with the people. This is what people value in Santa Barbara and we're so proud of it. Well, we're here in the community room yes, because there is a community of people here. Pulling together and living together and loving life and loving Santa Barbara. Well, it's called El Carrillo, Carrillo. and it is a community, a it true is. community and definitely one of the finest examples of California's communities. We've had an absolutely wonderful and very educational and inspirational day here at El Carrillo. Hello, my name is Robert Spector and I live at this wonderful place called at the El Carrillo um, Apartments and uh, I've lived here for over two years and it's a wonderful place and it has great support. And I'm gonna play some music for you right now. California's Communities is supported by the California Redevelopment Association Foundation, a statewide organization made up of cities, counties, nonprofits, and private businesses sharing a common goal of bringing renewed life to neighborhoods and downtowns by expanding local businesses, creating jobs, building affordable housing, restoring buildings, and improving public facilities and infrastructure. Redevelopment, building better communities throughout California.